Woo! Hello Facebook um, and welcome to how to pack an RDS. Um, so last time, the last video we did on the RDS was how to hook it up. Uh, so this is pretty much where we got to. So I've now got it on both my shoulders. I've just finished uh, connecting the RDS. Um, before we get into packing it, it's nice now to just recheck again to make sure we can just with our thumbs give those a slide and we just want to make sure that they're pulled all the way through and they're not tucked back inside like that. We really want to avoid a, uh, a ring fire. So we just give them a check, make sure they're all the way through. Same on the back, the front. Cool. And we're good, so now we're ready to start packing. So again, remembering we want the lanyard that's connected to our D-bag trailing, so it needs to be going out the back. Cool, so I'm gonna put it on my left shoulder, that's how I pack. We're gonna throw it on your left shoulder, or right, depending on how you do it. I pack slider down as well. So what I like to do first is I'm gonna quarter the slider. Um, all of this is the same, and you might do things slightly different. Uh, but in general, we just want to do what we normally do as if it was a regular slider. So we give that a nice quarter. Important here to make sure as well when we're quartering it, um, we're, we're moving our hands around the front and the back of the slider. It can be easy to catch these. If we catch these, these obviously are our releases for the slider cutaway. So be careful not to catch that and pull them. So that's uh, quite important. Again, we don't want one corner of our slider just popping off during opening, it's going to be a very bad opening if that happens. Cool, so we're going to quarter our slider, front and back. I'm just going to count out my cells. This is a Petra, so there's going to be nine. Just tidy them up quickly. Cool. So that's our nine cells there. At this point as well, just to make sure we've got it, I like to make sure we bring that slider and make sure it's corded nicely as well. And then I'm gonna grab all that, just give it a little shake, put it between my legs. Obviously this is a sail canopy, so you can see when it moves, it kinda is a bit more solid. Um, it's not gonna be flopping around maybe like ZP, your regular ZP would. So it's gonna pack a little bit differently. And here, I'm just gonna do what I normally would do, okay? I'm gonna leave this lanyard for now, just trailing down the bottom. I'm just gonna pretend like this isn't even attached. And I'm just gonna go through, quarter that slider again, go through and tidy up my line groups. However you may do this, it's just, the main thing is, we're not changing anything uh, with the RDS. The kind of tricky bit comes in just a second. So, I like to do only a little bit when I'm packing, to be honest. Um, here at Aerosports, we make amazing canopies that just do all the work for you. So, it's better to keep it simple. Cool, just gonna flake that in, making sure those line groups are on the outside, just like you would on your pack job. Cool, slider still corded. Now you could also check just to make sure that those uh, cutaway cables haven't moved, they're looking pretty good, and the rings are sitting nice and even. Oh, actually, I've forgotten one thing, and this is the key thing. Before we flake it in like that, this is when we're gonna bring that lanyard and stick it over our shoulder. It needs to be coming up through the line groups, going off like it was a regular pack job. Apologies. So, that's all good though, we're still flaked in. So this is the key thing we wanna remember. Lanyard coming up, and you can sling it over your shoulder just to have it out of the way. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of personal preference and it's gonna take a little bit of time to figure out which side you like it sitting on. But when I pack, I put the, when I put the canopy down, I like the D-bag sitting out to my right, okay? And that just works for me. So that's why I've got it coming around and sitting off to the right. Um, if you like it over the left, you might have it over the shoulder and slinging to the left or vice versa. So there we go. So now, I'm gonna grab that tail, making sure I keep tension. Another important thing to note with this here, we want to give it a little bit of slack, okay? We don't want it completely tight because if we see here, if I start pulling that, it starts pulling the slider up. And that's definitely what we don't want. It's going to pull it out of that nice quartering that we did before and it can mess up the rest of the pack job. So remember, we want to keep that nice and loose so it keeps down and we're not going to be pulling that slider up and out. Just going to grab that tail. I like to hold this all together just to keep it together so it's not going to move apart. 
grab my tail. Um, as this is a cross brace canopy, we're going to go for that center stitch as our center. And, and the um, warning label as well. Same as a non cross brace canopy. Cool. So now, just going to hold that, pinch it. I can bring this off my shoulder because now my hand here is holding it out of the way. And then I'm just going to sit it off to the side so that I can get my tail around. I'm just going to push that nose in just a little bit, just a tiny bit, just so uh, it helps the canopy come around. If we push that too much, it's going to mess up any of the nice work we've done. Um, that's pretty basic sort of knowledge. If you're at the stage where you're packing an RDS and you don't know that, um, you should maybe use a regular slider. An RDS isn't just quite right for you this year. Cool. So now, just going to bring this around, bringing that tail around. Um, it's probably good to note now, this is a 66 Petra, so it's probably going to look a little bit different to maybe how your pack job is. Uh, it's a small canopy, but the principles are all the same. Then I'm just going to roll that a couple times down the bottom. Uh, you don't really need to see that, but just a couple little rolls. And there we go. So we've got that lanyard coming out. We've not pulled it too much because it pulls that slider on the inside and we've just got it resting over the top. Now I'm just going to get a bit of air out. This is easier on the smaller canopies, obviously. Cool, okay. That'll do for right now. We're just going to rest the canopy down. And this lanyard, like I said, I like having it off to the right. That's just the side I like to work on. We're going to have that resting to the right, okay? And lucky for me, there's no spaghetti. Not bad. Rightio. So, keeping this out to the side, what we want to do is cock our pilot chute. Gonna cock that, make sure it's all good to go. Uh, now, this is where, um, if you watched the last video, I talked about this rubber band that I have on the end. Okay, this is personal preference, um, but this is how I like to stow the excess. Okay, uh, this bag also has it as well, it has a pocket um, which you can also use, uh, and I have seen other people who stow the excess up the top. Um, I'll explain why, once I pack it, uh, why I like this better. Um, but for now, we're just going to stow it. So, this is a technique I use. Rubber band closest to the D-bag. And now I'm just going to do S-folds with the line. All the way to where we meet the two joining um, lanyards. Okay? And that's my perfect marker because I know that that is perfect for when I go to pack it. Okay? So that's as far as I go. Um, good to note here as well, I'm using a large band, but it's been cut in half, just so it's not quite as strong. Uh, and then I like to give that just a double stow. And there we go, that's our lanyard nice and tidy. Okay, so now comes the point of putting it in the bag. So we want to keep this out the side for now. I'm going to get in the way a little bit, so it might be easier. Jen, if you just come around and look down through there. Cool. So, I'm just going to go through, get the air out of the canopy. I'm not going to tell you how to get the air out of your canopy. Everyone's going to do this differently. Some people might want to lie on it. I know some people, who, some swoopers, who just lie on it because they're quite lazy and they like a little rest. Get all that air out. Okay. So now, because this is a um, 66, I don't do that S fold. And the canopy is quite small, so I'm just going to go through and do my one fold two as opposed to a triple a little bit of pressure on the knee and this is where we've got to move this so this is where that length that I was talking about between the uh, or how far we stow the lanyard now this is just going to sit over the top and we bring the bag around and that's it and all of this we want to sit at the bottom well I've got it like this I can probably explain why I prefer this method personally is I find when um, the D-bag's coming off, the lanyard's pulling that way, as opposed to pulling line across the top of the canopy. Um, it's inevitable that if you jump an RDS, you are most likely gonna get line burn uh, along the way. As soon as we, we've got 
line sitting across the canopy. It's pretty much unavoidable, but we can try and mitigate it and sort of minimize that uh, risk. So I've been using this system for many years now, um, and there are gonna be people who probably disagree because they have the, everyone has their own one, but I've had maybe line boom once or twice on five canopies I've owned. So it works for me. Um, I believe it would work for you if you want to try it. So uh, that's one way to do it. Now we're going to put it in the bag. And this is basically just normal. We just want to keep that there. We're going to slide the bag over. And we just keep this all at the bottom. And we just want to make sure that bridle attachment is just getting tucked to the bottom. Okay. And then slide the bag in. And that's pretty much it. So from here we can just go on and do our locking stows. Um, when you do this, it doesn't matter if you if this sits um, in the center so much. Uh, sorry, if this comes across to the side. But what I like to do, this is two stows, so this is a semi stowless bag. So I'm going to give it a squeeze together. I like to squeeze it together with my knees. lines up and just give a double stow and because this is a if you've got a, um, a three stow bag then this is obviously going to be one side of the grommet which is not a big deal and then I'll put the second stow in cool you can see I like my stows quite small. Um, no more than two fingers, I recommend on any high performance canopy. That's what we recommend here as well. So Leia, your Petras, um, Sophia's, and Slayers. Uh, and then with this here, if you want, it's not too bad, but I just tuck that away just so it sits nice and flush and we don't have any chance of grabbing this and pulling it out. So that's pretty much it. From here, you just go and do your pack job as normal. Um, so there's only really a couple of key points where you you really have to change anything, and that's when I forgot actually. Um, bringing that lanyard up, putting it over your shoulder when you're ready to bring the tail up, or just before you flake it inwards, uh, or outwards, whatever you do. Um, and then obviously, how you want to stow the excess, I showed you the way I do it, and then we have um, the other way actually, now that we can see with the bag closed, if we had the excess, some people have the excess trailing out here still, and that's when you would S fold it like I did, and instead of attaching it to the rubber band at the bottom, you could tuck it away in that pocket at the front. Um, so most bags, this is a Vector semi stowless so you can see there's a little pocket in there. Um, and that is where you could put your excess. Uh, and your lunch money if you want, I don't know. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. Uh, like I said though, if you are thinking about using an RDS, um, just be sure that you're comfortable, that you're, you know, you're not overwhelmed when it comes to opening. Um, we don't want to get sort of focused on this system and forget about looking for traffic. So if you're at that point where you can only focus on this and you can't focus on what's around you, it might not be time to try an RDS yet. And also, one of the big things to remember, as soon as we add more processes to our system, we increase the chance of things going wrong because there's more things that can go wrong. Uh, and obviously, you can see from the way I've packed it, there's a line trailing across the top skin you may cause damage to your canopy and that's just how it is that's what that's the price you pay for that extra little bit of speed um, so yeah so that's packing it uh, before we go there was a good question last week which i didn't cover and it was um, can you use an rds on a non cross brace canopy and the short answer is yeah you can um, however uh, from a company standpoint and i believe most manufacturers would would sort of advise the same we haven't done a lot of testing or r d on using RDS sliders on our non-cross brace canopies. I know people that have, but as we don't specifically design an RDS for say a Crossfire 3, uh, we can't officially say, yeah, go for it. But it is possible in theory. So I hope that answers some people's, you know, sort of answers that question for a few people. But yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. And if you are thinking about it, just have a good think. And um, cheers, Dan and uh, enjoy. It is, a, it is a nice system to use when you get used to it. So there you go. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. Woo!